Hey everyone, here's another advanced medical terminology lesson. In this lesson, we're gonna delve more into specific prefixes and suffixes for nervous system anatomy, cardiovascular and respiratory anatomy, and endocrine anatomy. So to begin, we're gonna look at nervous system anatomy first. So the first one we're gonna talk about is the prefix encephalo. Encephalo means brain. So you can think of terms like encephalopathy, disease of the brain, encephalitis, which is inflammation of the brain. Those types of terms relate to the brain. The next one is myelo, and myelo, the prefix myelo means spinal cord. So you can think of myelitis, a transverse myelitis is a inflammation of the spinal cord. You can also think of terms like poliomyelitis, where this is a viral inflammatory condition of the gray matter in the spinal cord more specifically. Another prefix is cerebello. This one is pretty easy. This means the cerebellum. The cerebellum is the considered the small brain in the back of the cerebrum, and this is involved in motor coordination and balance. The next prefix we're going to talk about is pineal or pineal O, which stands for the pineal gland, a small gland in the center of the brain involved in releasing melatonin. The next prefix is dur or duro. This stands for the dura mater, so one of the dura that surround the brain. So there is the dura mater, arachnoid, and pia mater. So dura mater more specifically, you can think of terms like epidural or subdural. Those types of terms all relate to the dura mater. Another prefix involving the brain is fronto, and fronto relates to the frontal lobe of the cerebrum. And the frontal lobe is right here. Another prefix is tempero, the temporal lobe. So tempero is a prefix that relates to or stands for the temporal lobe. And here is the temporal lobe in the cerebrum. Another one is occipito. Occipito means occipital lobe. And the occipital lobe is here. And the last prefix for the lobes in the brain is parieto which stands for the parietal lobe, and the parietal lobe is here. So again, fronto for frontal lobe, temporo for temporal lobe, occipito for occipital lobe, and parieto for parietal lobe. So you can think of terms like frontotemporal dementia or frontotemporal degeneration, a specific type of dementia. You can also think of other terms where many of these can be combined together to indicate a specific area in the brain such as frontoparietal or temporoparietal. Another prefix is polio. We alluded to this earlier. Polio means gray matter. So you can think of the polio virus, poliomyelitis. We've talked about this term earlier. So polio means gray matter. And conversely, white matter is indicated by the prefix leuco. You can think of leukodystrophy, a condition involving the white matter in the brain. So leuco actually means white or is a prefix indicating the color white, but in the context of talking about the nervous system in the brain, leuco can indicate white matter. So think about words like leukodystrophy. So those are a lot of medical terms for macroscopic nervous system anatomy. Now we're going to talk about microscopic nervous system anatomy. So the prefix neuro means nerve or neuron. So that's pretty easy to remember. And we can be more specific by talking about certain parts of the neuron. So the prefix dendra means dendrite. So the dendrites are essentially the tree-like structures that branch off of the soma of the neuron and they help with receiving neural input from other neurons. Another prefix is soma. And this is not really a prefix as much as it is a word. And soma just means the body of the neuron. And I alluded to this earlier. This is the soma, the body of the neuron. Plexo, the term plexo means or refers to the nerve plexus. The prefix ganglio means ganglion. And the prefix or suffix myelin means the myelin sheath. So the myelin sheath is the fatty layer that essentially insulates the axon of a neuron. So you can think of demyelination. So that is one of the terms you can remember. Synapto means synapse or relates to the synapse. So here's a synapse where one neuron would make contact with another neuron, and that is the synapse. So you can think of words like synaptogenesis, new formation of synapses. 
Another prefix is GLI or GLIO, and this prefix stands for glial cells. Glial cells are supportive nervous system cells in the brain that help support neurons. Another prefix that you might hear about in nervous system anatomy is astrocyte or astrocyto. This relates to an astrocyte. An astrocyte is a particular type of glial cell. You can think of astrocytosis, so an abnormal condition of astrocytes. So this is one term you might hear about. Another one is schwano. The prefix schwano stands for or relates to schwann cells. Schwann cells are supportive glial cells in the peripheral nervous system that actually make up the myelin sheath of nerves in our peripheral nervous system. And another prefix you might hear about is oligodendro. Oligodendro refers to an oligodendrocyte. And oligodendrocytes are glial cells that wrap the axons of other central nervous system cells to make the myelin sheath to protect those axons. So these are all prefixes and terms you might hear about with regards to nervous system anatomy. So we're going to move on now to pulmonary anatomy. The first one is respiro and pulmo or pulmono. These prefixes both relate to the lung itself. So respiro, you can think of respirologist, pulmo or pulmono, you can think of pulmonologist. Both of these relate to a specialist with regards to lungs. Another prefix that you will hear often is pneumo, and pneumo essentially means air. So you can think of terms like pneumonia. So this is a common term or common prefix you're going to hear a lot. Another prefix is tracheo, which relates to the trachea, the windpipe. So here is the trachea. Another prefix you're going to hear often is the prefixes bronco or bronchio. So bronco stands for the main stem bronchi more specifically, and bronchio may relate to the bronchioles, the smaller bronchi. And the prefix alveol or alveoli refer to the alveoli, the small microscopic air sacs in the lungs where oxygen and gas exchange occur. Other prefixes that you might not hear often are hyle, which relate to the hilum. You can think of hyler adenopathy. Another prefix is bleno, and bleno refers to mucus. Another one is pleur, which refers to the pleura, the lining around the lungs. And pleura, you can think of pleuritis. Other terms relating to upper airway structures include epiglot or epiglotti, which refers to the epiglottis, the covering that covers the larynx during swallowing. And another one is crico, and this refers to the cricoid cartilage. So we're going to move on now to cardiovascular anatomy. So cardiovascular anatomy, you may have heard of some of these terms in my other lessons. So first, I'll just say cardio is the prefix that means heart. So cardio means heart. You can think of cardiologist, cardiac disease. The other prefix is atrio. Atrio refers to the atria. The atria are the areas shown here. Another prefix is ventriculo. Ventriculo refers to the ventricles. So the ventricles are the areas where blood is pumped to either the pulmonary circulation from the right ventricle or the systemic circulation where blood is pumped from the left ventricle. Septo is a prefix referring to the septum. The septum is the area separating the right and left sides of the heart. So all these terms, you can think of atrio, you can think of atriol, atrial appendage, you can think of with regards to ventriculo, you can think of ventricular, you think you can think of premature ventricular contraction. With septal, septo, you can think of septal. Another term you may hear often is angio. You can think of angioplasty. Angio is a term that means vasculature or artery. Another prefix is veno. Veno means vein. So you can think of veno occlusion or a veno thromboembolism. All of these relate to veins. Another prefix is arterio. Arterio means artery. So you can think of terms like arteritis. And another prefix that is somewhat related to the cardiovascular system is lymph. And this is more related to the lymphatic system. It means lymph. So you can think of lymphatic or lymph drainage. And another term is aorto. The prefix aorto means the aorta. So the aorta is the main artery leaving the left ventricle, the main artery that supplies the rest of the body. So you can think of aortitis, an inflammation of the aorta. 
and vasculo. Vasculo means vascular or vasculature, similar to angio. So you can think of vasculopathy, a disease of vasculature. So we'll move on now to the endocrine system. And again, many of these terms you may have heard before in the past. The prefix endocrino means endocrine. And what does endocrine mean? Endocrine, if you were to break it down, endocrine, the first part of the word endocrine means in, and crine means secretion. So it's a secretion of something in something else. And that was really what endocrine means. So with regards to the prefix endocrino, you can think of endocrinopathies, diseases of the endocrine system. Other prefixes in include some of the prefixes that relate to organs in the body. Because many organs in the body release hormones, they are part of the endocrine system. So nephro is the prefix that means kidney. You can think of nephrologist. You can think of glomerulonephritis, those types of terms. The prefix adreno means adrenal gland. So adrenal, you can think of adrenal. You can think of adrenal insufficiency, those types of conditions relating to the adrenal gland. Another prefix that you might not hear often is hypophysis or hypophysis, and this means pituitary gland. And another one that means pituitary gland is more easy to remember, which is the pituitero, which means pituitary gland. So both of these prefixes can mean the pituitary gland. More specifically, there's a couple other terms that can mean pituitary in a more specific way. The adenohypophysis or adenohypophysis relates to the anterior pituitary gland. So the pituitary is split into anterior and posterior pituitary glands. Adenohypophysis is the anterior pituitary gland and the prefix neurohypophysis relates to the posterior pituitary. So neurohypophysis is the posterior pituitary. Other prefixes that you're gonna hear often are thyro and this relates to the thyroid gland. So you can think of hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism. Another prefix is parathyro which relates to the parathyroid glands. So parathyroid glands are the four small glands in behind the thyroid that release parathyroid hormone in calcium homeostasis. So again, a lot of these are very common terms you're gonna hear. Another one is thymo, which relates to the thymus. And another one is pancreato, which relates to the pancreas. So you can think of pancreatitis. So many of these terms you may have heard in other lessons, but Again, all of these terms are part of the endocrine system because many of these organs release hormones along with performing their other functions as well. So now that we've learned all of those terms, let's put them into practice. So the first one we're gonna look at is the word bronchiectasis. So let's break it down. So bronchi, we've learned that bronchi or bronco or bronchio relates to the bronchioles. And ectasis, we didn't hear about this suffix in this lesson, but we've heard about it in, in other lessons. Ectasis means dilation or distension. So the combined term of bronchiectasis means essentially dilation or distension of bronchioles, but it's actually a chronic bronchiolar condition involving thickening, where you can think of distension of the bronchioles due to inflammatory changes. And oftentimes these individuals with bronchiectasis have inflammatory changes that lead to copious amounts of mucus production. The next term we're going to talk about is neurohypophyseal. So neurohypophyseal, if we break it down again, we can think of the prefix neurohypophys as one term. We could break that down even more, but we'll think about it as one term right now. Neurohypophys means the posterior pituitary. A way of remembering this is that the hypophys means pituitary and neuro means that it is part of the posterior pituitary where neurons from the hypothalamus are what lead into the posterior pituitary. So that might help you if you understand that neural anatomy well. And the suffix eel essentially means relating to. So neurohypophyseal means relating to the posterior pituitary gland. So you might hear about the neurohypophyseal portal system or the neurohypophyseal tract. So these systems and parts of the anatomy are related to the posterior pituitary gland. The next term is cerebellitis. So if we break that down, cerebellitis, the prefix cerebell or cerebello refers to the cerebellum, that part in the back of the brain where that is involved in motor coordination. The suffix itis, we've talked about many times in previous lessons, means inflammation of. So cerebellitis is an inflammation of the cerebellum. The next practice problem is astrocytoma. So what does this mean? So it's pretty easy if we break it down. 
astrocyte, the prefix astrocyte refers to astrocytes. And I didn't talk about this before, but astrocytes again are glial cells, but they themselves are broken down as well. Astro means star, and they're essentially star-shaped glial cells. Astro is star, cytes is cells. They're star cells. They're star-shaped glial cells. That's what an astrocyte is. The suffix oma means tumor. So an astrocytoma is a tumor of astrocytes. The next practice problem is pneumothorax. So you might've heard of this condition, pneumothorax. So if we break it down, the prefix pneumo means air and thorax is essentially thorax, the chest wall. So the term pneumothorax means a condition of having air in the thorax. And that's not what we want. If it's air in between the thorax and the lung, it can cause a collapsed lung. And that is what a pneumothorax is. And the last term we're gonna talk about is atrial ventricular septal defect. So atrial ventricular septal defect, if we break that down, it's pretty easy. The prefix atrio means atria. The suffix ventriculo means ventricles. And the suffix er or ar means relating to. So that first word means relating to the atria and ventricles. If we break down septal, sept means septum. So the separation of the right and left sides of the heart. The suffix ul, al, means relating to. So if we put all of this together, an atrial ventricular septal defect is a defect, often genetic or an inherited defect involving the atrium, ventricle, and septum of the heart. So if you want to learn more medical terminology, please check out my medical terminology playlist. I have many, many lessons and practice lessons in that playlist. And if you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to help support the channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.